Okay, so right here I am going through uh, days three and four of this training week. So this is my day three, which is going to be my primary uh, bench day, which is my heaviest bench day of the week. Um, so today I had um, two top triples up to RPE six. So um, I did 292 for this first set, and it was felt like it was not RPE six. Um, so I up, up to up to uh, 303 this next set after, um, which you guys will see. Uh, Moved pretty well until the rack kind of got in the way. Um, because I use the fat pad, which by the way, like I bought this fat pad for the gym. Um, and really like it doesn't add really that much to my bench. Uh it mostly helps out with um if you have like a really, really big arch, tends to help provide some more stability because it helps like the shoulders sit a little bit, bit lower. Um, but for me it's mostly just I can tolerate a little bit more training volume. But that was like really, really easy until like I just didn't get the rack. I had I hit the rack on that second rep because I didn't have the, the apparently didn't just didn't have the uh, the, the pad properly placed on it. I also messed it up on this one too. I don't know if I put this in, but I meant I messed it up and I was doing this too. So I got kind of frustrated, like, oh my gosh, like this is really annoying. But uh yeah, just like something to like, just note. Yeah, I did that again. I was like, this is this is dumb. But the reason why um like fat pads can be helpful, just it helps me tolerate more volume on my shoulders. Um, just in the past, that's been a limiting factor of mine. So that's one thing I do recommend, you know, if you do have it at your gym, um, you know, maybe you can use it or ask if you can buy one for the gym for like 250 bucks and totally worth it. Um, then I have three sets of nine um, here with 242 RP6. Um, and so I'm doing a lot of volume still. Um, I'm basically in a period of training where I am doing a lot more overall volume because it's just more of a GPP block or you basically see like volume accumulation um just because like coming off of the meet the idea of doing doing like really heavy singles is not really that exciting to me so that's kind of why i'm doing a little more higher reps um then i had worked on to three sets of um 10 to 15 reps on a flat um double bench press um i did 75s for three by 15 um looking pretty freaking juicy here um but oh, I, I do like these i do think that the main reason why I do, you know, add in some um, dumbbell work for all my athletes is just because you can get a little bit more um, volume for your pressing um, that can be a little bit easier on your shoulders because sometimes straight barbell pressing isn't the easiest to get a ton of volume on, especially if you're not really well built for that in terms of how your shoulders are built. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, obviously, you can sort of like, you know, make quick grip with the a little bit different, which is like, well, that's why I personally have the closer grip is because a wider grip doesn't really, it messes up with my shoulders. That's also why when I go down on my dumbbells, I tend to have a little bit more of a, um, an angle down when I'm going down to my chest and then, you know, flare a little bit, bit more up. Um, you just target a little bit more pressing volume. It's a little bit easier on the shoulders and really a good way to get in some hypertrophy for the chest. Um, so then I also did four sets of 15 to 20 on these tricep push downs. Um, just a lot of volume in general um with, with pushing like um with basically like the main goal of my coach and i have is to build you know we all always have like this big big goal of you know constantly be building muscle but um just really trying to get more volume in i train mostly like, like a bodybuilder as you guys are probably realizing like i just do squat bench and deadlift like and i include that in um and so most of my training is just a lot of accessories higher volume i mean that's just what i respond best to and um, then I moved on to some single arm dumbbell skull crushers, um, or sorry, dumbbell preacher curls. I really, really, really like these. Um, basically, it helps get more of that peak contraction emphasis where it's hardest at the top. Um, and it just helps it out with a little different you know, fiber type growth. So in general, if you're, for example, if you're curling, it probably makes sense to have something that is a little more hard at the stretch position, something that's a little bit more hard at the uh, shortened position, and then something that's just a little bit hard um, throughout. So for example, like in this block, I have hammer curls, um, dumbbell curls for that full range of motion, um, preacher curls for that shortened and range of motion, and then incline dumbbell curls for that lengthened uh, emphasis. Um, that's just a way to get a little bit more um, overall hypertrophy because for muscle growth, it's a little bit better actually to have more exercise variation. Um, whereas with strength, you don't want that because strength is specific to a task and um, you need to actually like beyond the initial motor learning and learning stages, which is why beginners tend to progress really, really rapidly. Um, if you are making sort of progress, um, that's 
you know, probably due to the, you having a little bit, little bit more muscle or actually truly getting stronger, not just getting a nervous system that's better acclimated to um, the new movement. Um, then I moved on to some dumbbell, uh, inclined dumbbell upright, upright right rows. Um, I always include some sort of lateral raise in upright row. Um, I don't know why people demonize upright rows. It's the same shoulder um, angle more or less than as a lateral raise. I think it's just gotten like a bad tracker record for really like no, no reason. Um, and again, there's four sets of 15 to 20 um, here. Um, I did, I, I always do, like, like, like I said, these are a really great exercise. They do hit the delts in a different way than lateral raises do. Um, so it's good to keep, keep that in. Then I ended off with some abs. Um, I'm doing standing for these cable crunches. It has a little bit of a different force curve than if you're doing them kneeling down, which is what I see most people do and I've done in the past, but um, I like doing it I like, it like this every now and then. Um, I do mostly try to do some abs, like basically um, every single day because it's just a muscle group that I care about. Um, that I will never train my calves. It's my brand. Um, it's just too boring for me. And I perceive more payoff with having a really strong core for, for powerlifting. Um, definitely helps out a, a ton. Um, so basically what I'm doing here, I'm thinking of basically holding my um, chest to my belly button and just shortening that as much as I possibly can while keeping my butt back um, as I'm crunching, just having the, the abs just do, do, do all the work and not just low, low back. So this is the next day after, um, this is my, basically my tertiary or my quaternary, um, bench day. So this is just a super, super, super light to three, three, three by three tempo bench press. Um, so if you're doing four times a week benching that for like the third day is going to be way easier. And the fourth day is basically going to be just pure technique sleeper work. Um, like I bench 369 pounds, this is 225 for just three tempo triples. So it's just as enough heavy of a weight. For me to be able to feel my technique um it also helps promote a little bit more re recovery um and also just because my range of motion is so long um i do need to have a little more of that sort of grease the groove with having bench just be a little bit more familiar when i do bench press a little bit more often but this is like you know one rpe it's like it's not hard at, at all um and again um i just choose the bench grip because it's best for my shoulders um i can have a stacked Elbow position position under the dirt of the bar, um, and I actually so if you have a little more of a closer grip, you can tend to use a little bit more of the triceps and the chest together. Whereas if you have more of a wide grip, it's mostly just chest. So if you don't have a very wide grip on bench press, it's probably best to have more of a you know at least like you know not like full max grip, which is going to be like your uh, pointer finger on on the ring, um, having more of like your, your middle finger or maybe your ring finger or I'm pink, I'm actually slightly inside of my pinkies with my my con grip is just it's what works best for me. Um, but that's going to allow you to use like both of your triceps and your chest together a little bit more. Whereas if you have a you know a really really wide grip, you can't really do that much as much. Uh, you won't be able to like really use as, as much force. So it's best usually for those people is they have like a really really big arch to use a you know, more of a max grip. If you don't have a, have a really big arch, probably best to use something you know with. Uh, from the, the middle finger on the ring to the pinky. Um, then I did three sets of uh, 10 to 15 on seated dumbbell overhead press, um, just for that overhead mobility. Um, I just I just find that it helps me just feel a little bit more healthy in my shoulders. Um, then I did four sets of 15 to 20 on, or sorry, three sets of 15 to 20 on these cable tricep extensions. Um, so this fourth day is basically more or less a bodybuilding day. Was just a slight, just slight technique work. So mostly like arms and stuff like like that. Is that something that I am really you know, focused on? Um, on this, I'm just really focusing on driving my elbows for as much as I possibly can and stretching them and just having really just full good range of motion. Um, you should always be training the muscle through as you know as full range of motion as possible, just to standardize how you can one number one track your exercises and then number two making sure that you are actually providing a target stimulus on the actual musculature because if you do like you know partial reps or whatnot like we do have some research that like partial reps at a lengthened position can be beneficial um but i think that in general for most people the the main thing is is you're going to get the best stimulus to fatigue ratio it's basically going to be you know the best muscle growth strength strength in um in the least fatigue which will be all that, all that soreness and uh aches and pains from using more of a full range of motion and then moved on here doing these uh, seated one arm cable rows. Um, I 
like doing these because it helps get a little bit of my my lower lat fibers um just good for some some variation also i like incorporating some single arm work with my lats because it helps me understand using my scapula a little, little bit bit better um but here i'm thinking about just basically driving the elbow down towards my, my hips and using the my, my hand as just a or sorry my, my yeah my hand as just as a hook um and try to keep my, my chest high um but these are a really great exercise to use um the back is a very complicated set of muscle groups so you know usually i recommend about three to four exercises per muscle group at the very most but back is one of those that definitely you know benefits from a little bit more of a large variety of, of exercises um i still don't think that these cable rolls like replace like something like a t-bar row or like heavy dumbbell rows or penley rows this is just a good like supplemental way to get in a little bit more volume with a little bit less um fatigue especially if you do powerlifting the axial fatigue tends to become a limiting factor um then i did two sets of 10 to 15 of these lat prayers um these just are a little bit different different function of the lats which is going to be shoulder um extension um so this is going to be something that basically trains it again a different area of your back which is good because the back is a very complicated series of muscle groups probably needs to have several different exercises and different angles to um hit it from um with these i'm thinking about puffing my, my chest up as i do lower the bar as i do kind of bring the cable down towards my my hips um and then driving through my my elbows as much as i possibly can um you can't really avoid your triceps being worked with, with this but you can mitigate it if you're trying to use you know, the least amount of actual tension in your arms or through the triceps if possible mostly pulling down uh through your your lats um it might take some time to get, get used to i find that kneeling tends to help me get a better mind muscle connection than standing though um then here i did just some two arm dumbbell uh, row, uh curls so one thing you'll see here is that i am letting my elbows move a little bit forward and that's basically because one of the functions of the bicep is to actually go through shoulder flexion um it's it basically it inserts on the shoulder on the front delt um and that's just something that you can do to get a little bit more of a better stimulus um and get a little bit better overall connection to the muscles um it's not something that you, you have to do but i think that some people are like oh i have to pin my elbows too much to my, my size that's not really true you know just, the bicep cannot you know it doesn't just uh flex the elbow it also flex the flexes the shoulder so don't be afraid to, to do the do that um but you are using your dumbbell curls um then I did some face pulls um against some rear delt work also has some upper back work and some lateral delt work. Um, with these, I'm really thinking about pulling towards my ears and flaring out my elbows. Um, this is like a general rule of thumb on really any back movements. Um, whatever your uh, elbows end up is probably like around the muscle that is being trained for that movement. So if you're having more of your elbows flared, probably more of, an, uh, more of an upper back. If your uh, elbows are more tucked in close to your sides, probably closer to, to lats. Um, you know, does that mean that one is better than the other? No, it just depends upon what are you are you going for um here so i like again rear delt work is just really important to just keep your shoulders healthy uh, especially with all the pressing that we do as power lifters so you're always you know including that and then i did some lateral raises on um, this clip cut out so i couldn't go like all the way through um then but it did some lateral raises um again i don't do these like straight out with my arms to the side i do them with the scapular plane which is like a 45 degree angle and try to think about leading with my elbows uh most of matters here is you're getting a good mind muscle muscle connection and I did four sets of 15 or three sets of 15 and 20 there. Then I also did um, these Bosley ball crunches. So these are an interesting exercise because they train a different muscle group than the, your actual like crunches do or leg raises. They train the transverse abdominis, which is a belt, seat belt like muscle group that actually is right underneath the rectus abdominis. Uh, and basically helps you with a little more of that. Um, like that's actually what's used a little, a little bit more when you're bracing for heavy lifts and for um, really just going through you know every single barbell lift. So these might look kind of kind of funny, but for some reason, I, I don't exactly know the science behind it, but this trains that muscle as well as like another one that does is um, abdominal rollouts. Um, I do I do incorporate those too, but I like going be, like between these and the abdominal rollouts. Um, these also have a really great, great stretch on the abs. So yeah, these are basically my days three and four of this training block. Um, if you guys have any questions about it, um, just, just, let, just let, let me know. Um, and yeah, talk to you guys in the next one.